Hello, it's Philip Cargom. Uh, uh, welcome to Tea with a Druid. Uh, and it's lovely to see you here. I'm just clicking all the right buttons so I can talk to you. And uh, Tea with a Druid number 89. So do say if you can see me and if you can hear me and uh, where you're from. It'd be lovely to see you here. Tell me the sound's working. I'll check the microphone and we'll start. Daniel from Germany. Hi. And Ben Hopkinson. Good morning. You must be on the other side of the world in that case. And yeah, I am Nellie Kelly from Skegness. Beautiful Skegness. And Taiwan. Hugh in Taiwan. That's great. Fantastic. South, Southampton and Michigan. And Quebec. Quebec. I love to see you all. So here we are, it's a Monday evening in September. It's a beautiful day today. It had that slight bite in the air, suggesting that autumn is on its way. Some of the trees are already starting to turn golden. And, um, and what I wanted to share with you uh, this evening is in the, in the last Tea with a Druid session, I suggested a triad that I found helpful in coping with the sort of madness that's all around us in the world of politics and the environment. And it's a triad that helps me. And there was some very um, positive feedback from that. And, and so I'd like to go deeper into it over the next few sessions that we have together. So um, the, the, the triad was this three sources of comfort knowledge of the divine origin of all creation inspiration in the teachings of the mystics and sages support in the fellowship of like-minded souls so so let's let's go deeper into this it's a triad and those of you who are familiar with druidry will know that in druidism we often express uh, wisdom sayings in this threefold manner but this threefold manner of expressing ideas is common to other paths as well. And so in, in Buddhism, you have this triad of taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. And that's a powerful triad. And what it invites you to do is to take refuge in, a spirit, in the, the spiritual teacher, the Buddha, in the case of Buddhism, in uh, the teachings, the Dharma, and in the community that has grown up around the teachings. And that's wonderful if you're a Buddhist, but if you're, if you're not a Buddhist, is there a way in which you can work with a similar triad? And so this is the triad that I uh, proposed. And um, what I'd like to do is uh, start with looking at uh, this last aspect of it, which is um, community. In the triad, you notice in the Buddhist, um, in the Buddhist re three refuges, they talk about I take refuge, which uh, can seem quite appealing when the weather outside is really bad. You want to seek refuge from the craziness of the world and the difficulties of life. I think also what it means is comfort, support, inspiration, nourishment. We can spiritual ideas are often connotative rather than denotative you know the words that um denote very specific things when you're at the dentist you want them to use denotative language denoting specific objects that the dentist is going to use on you uh, in the spiritual world in the poetic world you want connotative words words that connote and suggest and are evocative so this idea, what we're seeking, I think, when we face the difficulties of life is we're seeking comfort, we're seeking refuge, we're seeking support, we're seeking nourishment, inspiration, something to hold on to in the sort of mad whirl of events, something to hold on to that stops us feeling stressed, stops us feeling anxious, stops us feeling despair and one of the values of a spiritual path you know I know that there are people there are people who talk to me and say why do you need a spiritual path you should be able to stand on your own in the world why do you need the crutch of 
a spiritual way. Well, I don't see it as a crutch. I see it as a necessity, really. I see spirituality as a way in which I resource myself. I, I, I am nourished and supported in this world. And so um, the, the, the support of the Sangha, of the community around us is hugely important. So I've expressed it in this, in this triad as the community of like-minded souls. And I think in the way when we're seeking community, at one level, separation is an illusion. So we, we cannot help but be in community. We're in community with all of life. And when on a good day, we can feel that. When you're feeling good, you can feel in touch with all of life and with the community of all being. But often we feel isolated and separated and and we need the support of community and of course it's not just one community if you think about what community means to you it was very interesting when we i asked once at a druid camp there were a couple of hundred people there and i said why are you here are you here to be close to nature and camping are you here to learn more about druidry and 99 percent of the people there said no we're here for the community we're here for our fellow uh spiritual seekers people of like-minded uh uh, orientation so it's hugely important to us and and we have different communities. we have the community of the family if you think about it they're all sort of nested concentric circles you might have your close community of friends you might have the community of your family you might have uh, a community your spiritual community that you belong to we this is a community here I mean I don't know how many people uh, who watch these videos regularly watch but I recognize when I look at the comments now, Betsy and um, Betsy who says, in which world is truly reality? Uh, and Pat and Lynn and Kika and so on. I recognize the same names. So we're meeting together every week. So we're forming part of a community. And so there are these concentric rings and each ring supports us in, in different ways. And each ring has value. Ultimately, we're supported by the community of all life. When we sit outside and the butterflies are there and the dragonflies, uh, they are part of our community. The trees around us are a part of our community. And I suppose you could say that that's what a nature spirituality is doing. It's introducing us into this community. And I think the time it hit me the strongest, one of the most moving moments in the 32 years of um well i suppose really actually longer the the 50 years of my life in the order since i was initiated on glastonbury tour 50 years ago um was was this we were in glastonbury uh, about three years ago um 200 of us it was june it was the summer solstice 200 of us were meeting together and we had a wonderful day ceremony up on Glastonbury tour. We had a big party that I stood for that night. And then we all went to bed. Some people went off to Stonehenge very early in the morning and came back. And when I woke up in the morning, we had a, a morning session and I had to lead the meditation in the morning. And Stephanie said to me over breakfast, have you heard the terrible news? And there was this London bridge attack where these terrorists went berserk and killed people and so on the London Bridge that night previous night so I was faced with a quandary of I was going to go into a room of 200 people probably I don't know half the people would have heard the news and half wouldn't have done I couldn't not mention it because that's like the elephant in the room and it would be wrong not to mention a tragedy of that proportion and yet at the same time I didn't want to uh, upset everybody to such a degree that the whole morning uh, people were anxious and uh, we weren't able really to have an effective, uh, helpful, supportive morning together. So that was the challenge. So Stephanie and I and Dave quickly met together before the uh, morning began and we decided on what we would do. And so if you can imagine 200 of us in the in the hall and I started off by 
telling everybody what had happened, saying, you know, those of you, some of you will have heard the news, some of you won't, but this is what's happened. And I invited members of the order who were in the room who worked for uh, the National Health Service and for the emergency services or for the civil services like, like uh, the police, uh, the fire brigade, the ambulance uh, service to come and stand in the middle of our circle. And about, I suppose, about 20 members, nurses, uh, policemen and so on, came and stood in the center of our circle. And I asked them to face outwards. And you can imagine the atmosphere. It was incredibly charged with, with feeling. And what we did is we said, look, you're standing there. We support you in the work that you do. And we are going to send you our love and we're going to chant the Arwen and we're going to send all our energy to you and through you to all the people in the National Health Service, all the people who are dealing with this emergency. And from there, of course, that, that will go out to the people they're working with and being with and so on. And so they stood there and we chanted the Arwens. And gosh, that was the most extraordinary thing. Tears were streaming from people's eyes. It was so, so moving. And then afterwards, and, and you know, they, dis they, they joined us all in the circle. We all held hands. And Dave picked up his guitar and he played this wonderful song called Time Machine. On, on the blog post that I do with this, I'll put up a video of, of, of Dave playing Time Machine. But it's one where his, the lyrics start off, last night I had a crazy dream. I built myself a time machine, said goodbye to all my friends, set the date and off I went. A couple of verses more. And then, so I went to meet Jesus Christ before he paid his father's price. I met Prophet Muhammad too. Didn't try to change their point of view and so on. God, it was fantastic. It was just an absolutely incredible moment. And we honored the moment. We honored the deep sadness at that time, but we honored our uh, hope and the positive energy of all these people in the order who are working in the community. And then we were able to go into a meditation and hopefully um, find nourishment and support. But it showed to me the power of community. If I'd been on my own that morning and I'd turned on the radio and I'd heard that news, I would, of course, like all of us, been sad, upset, disturbed, and with all those thoughts of, you know, what's happening to the world and how can people behave like this and isn't it awful and so on, and then, and then trying to get back to my center and trying to connect. But the power of the com community held us in this space where our hearts were fully open and engaged and our voices were fully open and engaged and, uh, and our souls were engaged too. So that I think is, 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 is the value of community. So here's the, here's the point of what I'm saying. Um, as we go through these tumultuous times, which we are going through with the environment and with politics, if you find it helpful, come back to these three things, these three sources of stability, of comfort, of anchoring, of nourishment. Knowledge of the one source of all being, an experience of it, and a belief in it, a hope in it, a love of it. Uh, we'll talk about that, uh, you, you know, on, on another tea session in, in more detail. Um, the inspiration of, uh, of that spiritual teaching can give you. Poetry, uh, spiritual teaching, all this. And um, again, we'll, let's come back to that. And then this source of inspiration, which I've talked about today, which is the power of, of community. And let's work with that now. We're in a community now. We are from Cork in Ireland, from Bournemouth, from Melissa, who's down in Brazil with all that's happening in Brazil now. Melissa, we send you, we send you our support and our love, and we know you're there close to what is happening. And all our friends in, in Brazil, we send 
uh, the Awen. And uh, to all of those, Babette, wherever you are, whether you're in France or Holland or Sweden, where I met you uh, the first time, Thailand, we've got Alexander in Thailand and, and so on, New Jersey, Slovakia. So we are a community. So let's all be a community now. And let's just take in a deep breath. And you might want to close your eyes to better concentrate on yourself. Take in a deep breath, hold it for a moment, and then let it out with a big, ah, big sigh. And then take in another deep breath and scrunch up all your muscles, hold, ah, and then unscrunch your muscles, relax all your muscles as you let the breath out. One more time, there's a great way of getting rid of tension and shifting gear. Breathe in deeply, scrunch all your muscles up, scrunch up your face, nobody else can see you, scrunch, 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 and then, like that. And here you are, sitting in front of your computer, or your laptop, or your phone. But you allow that reality just to gently melt a little as you become aware instead of being seated in a clearing in the forest. Druids use this term, the sacred grove. The idea of a clearing in the forest where you commune with nature and where you commune with deity, with the divine, with your deep self and with the deep self of the world, the world soul. You become aware of the earth beneath you. This earth is alive. You can sense the life in the earth, all the insects and creatures in the earth, the minerals and rocks, the moisture. And you feel how good it is to be seated or standing on this earth. You feel the way the earth has a slow rhythm that you can tune into. You just let yourself relax into that rhythm. Just like when you go out for a walk and you might sit down on the grass and just slow down. You can do it even though you're working in your imagination or perhaps in the other world now. You can still experience that slowing down. And you can feel the palms of your hands on the earth now. Tuning into the energy of the earth. Just doing this brings you a sense of stability and of calm. And you sense how beneath you there are the roots of the trees. You can sense the trees reaching deep down into the earth. Connecting with each other. Not isolated as, a, as individual trees, but all connecting with each other. Communicating with each other. And with the moisture rising up the roots, up the trunk of the trees. And you become aware of the trunk of the trees behind you and around you now. And it's as if you can feel that rising energy. It's as if you can feel it rising through you too. Up into the sky, you sense the branches of the trees. the leaves in the air. And you sense the protection and the power of the trees.
And you sense how you're not separate from the world of the trees, the life of the trees. You're embraced by the trees. You're in the shade of the trees. The trunk of the tree helps to support your back. The shade of the leaves brings you freshness, brings you shade. And you can breathe in the perfume of the trees and the plants. And you look up into the sky and you breathe in the energy of the sky. And the energy of the sky flows down into your body, meeting the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And you feel yourself within the community of nature now. You may have the eyes of your imagination or of your inner self open now in the sacred grove. Or you may want to keep those eyes closed. But whether open or closed, feel and spend a few moments sensing your kinship with all of nature. Kinship means you are related. Sense how you are in the family of the world of nature. As we sit in silence together, all of us from all over the world, sitting in the forest together, breathing together in the quiet and the peace of this clearing. And you sense the presence of our brothers and sisters, the trees. The presence of the trees in the circle around us. As beings. As alive. And we sense ourselves too. And let's slowly stand up now and stand just a little ahead of the tree. So the tree is one or two feet behind you. And sense how you're standing like a tree. Run your awareness down your body so that your, the soles of your feet are planted firmly on the earth, anchored on the earth. Breathing in and breathing out. Appreciating the miracle of being upright, of being a vertical being. And then gradually allow your arms and your imagination to just drift up as if they are great boughs of your tree. Your arms lift up. And as they lift up, you find that your hand, your hands take the hands of someone else who is standing beside you a fellow participant in this meditation. And just as trees speak to each other and connect with each other, 
So we connect now in our circle, heart to heart and hand in hand. And we can feel the energy of our circle standing here. Each of us is unique, an individual being standing upright on this earth. But we're also connected. We also have the support of others. And we feel that support we gently squeeze the hand to either side of us and we feel our hands being squeezed back. We are all in this community. And in Druid ceremonies, at the end of a ceremony, we often say, we swear by peace and love to stand, heart to heart and hand in hand. Mark, O Spirit, and hear us now confirming this, our sacred vow. And then, as you look around the circle, you sense the fellow members of this community together. You smile, you gradually let go of the hands to either side of you, and let's all together bring our hands down to touch the earth, to give our love to the earth. May this earth, may the forests of the earth, may all the earth be preserved and protected. And our love flows to the earth and we treasure and revere and respect this earth. We stand up, we lift our hands to our hearts to connect with the warmth of our hearts. And then slowly allow our hands to drift down. We take a few moments to appreciate being in the circle together. And then slowly we allow our awareness of the circle to fade as we become aware of being seated in front of our computers, our tablets, our phones. And slowly you stretch your fingers and toes and feeling fully present here and now. When you feel ready, you open your eyes. So I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. I think the idea, I think I've called this perhaps in my blog post, something about anchoring. I use the image of an anchor. There's something about our need to anchor ourselves, to ground ourselves, to find stability. And you'll see that all the ideas I was talking about, the images that were evoked in the meditation, they're all profoundly anchoring and grounding. The earth, the trees, our fellow community, holding hands, touching the earth, bringing our palms back to our hearts. They're all gestures, images, ideas that anchor us and help us to bring joy and love and light into the world. And so have a wonderful um, weekend. No, not weekend, week. It's Monday. Have a wonderful week. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week. And next week, let's explore another principle in that in that triad so in the meanwhile do feel free to to write in the comments and um, have a lovely week 
and I'm, I'm going to make some tea and I'll come back and read your comments. So lots of love and see you next week. Okay, bye.